then we also have provisions relating to ILO's influence, okay, how international labor organization has influenced this entire process of providing for uh, welfare legislations or providing for social security to employees in general. So ILO definition we have already studied. Similarly, it recognizes the uh, recognition of fundam uh, fundamental social right guaranteed by law to all human beings who live from their own labor. At international level, preamble of constitution of ILO also refers to the need and protection. Okay, so preamble of ILO's constitution also talks about the need and protection of workers against all these different situations that may create threat or concern in their mind. For that, protection should accordingly be given. Right to social security was uh, also recognized under the preamble. And after that, they have different conventions wherein some provisions or the other were recognized. Like we have social security, minimum standards convention that talks about minimum standard for level of social security benefits and conditions under which they are granted. That what is the minimum thing that you cannot simply ignore, it should be given only. On top of that, it depends on the employer, what all things they are providing, what all benefits they are providing. But there will be some minimum things which needs to be provided to the workers for purposes relating to all these different things. It also offers uh, states the possibility to rectify the by accepting at least three of its nine branches and subsequently accepting the obligations. Now, these conventions are like international conventions. States need to ratify it or different countries would ratify these provisions. And then they are duty bound to implement them in their national laws. So they have provided for nine different uh, parameters and they have said that these are the options you have out of this you can ratify any three and slowly slowly you you can try to implement all of them also so at first at least do something after that you can gradually try to implement all those provisions so that this employees also get some like minimum standard at least something they are getting out of nine at least three also if you provide that is also something so like that they are uh, influencing the states or the different countries that you should be you should start taking some steps whatever minimum steps or minimum things you can do you can start with that similarly we have social protection floors recommendation this instrument provides guidance on introducing or maintaining social protection floors and on implementing social protection floors at as per strategies to extend higher levels of social security to as many people as possible. Like I said, right, there would be different floors that this is the first stage where these, these things are like basic requirements that should be provided. After that, this is what we aim to achieve. After that, this is very good if we try to achieve this. So like that, there would be different stages and it's better as many people as we can provide this highest number of social security. So they are basically encouraging that whatsoever you can do, start with that, but then gradually try to increase the social securities that have been provided by you. Equality of Treatment Social Security Convention that establishes rules on equality of treatment of nationals and non-nationals in social security. It so happens that there are a lot of migrant workers from other countries they might be coming. So they cannot be like, okay, fine, this is applicable for Indians only. This benefit is applicable for Indian people of Indian origin only. For migrants, we are not providing it. That also should not be done because in that case, those migrant workers would be in a more worse situation. So it talks about equal treatment, social security convention that whoever are working, you need to treat them equally. Maintenance of Social Security Rights Convention. It provides for certain social security rights and benefits to migrant workers who face the problem of losing their entitlements to social security benefit, which they enjoy in their own country of origin. So same thing should not be suffered just because they migrated to some other 
uh, country for the purpose of war. Okay, so these are different uh, measures that are being taken and uh, different countries, right, they are encouraged to take as many steps as they can. Obviously, the national laws would vary from country to country. They would make their own changes, they would implement based on their own abilities, but then these are some, just like how directive principles we have, right, some directions been given. Similarly, these are some ideas or some rules that they can uh, look up to and then they can make changes in their national laws as well. So this is like the initial part which we have uh, before starting of the legislation. Is it clear? Yes, madam. So this is concept and importance, influence of ILO and constitutional mandate, this first part. Okay, after that few things we have already discussed, we'll see the remaining part.